So welcome back to Daily Transfer Update. And yes, as you've noticed, it is a late one today. Apologies for this morning. I had a very, very important meeting I had to go to. I tried getting out of it, but unfortunately I couldn't. So yeah, here I am. It's a late one, but let's get into it. A couple of players that are linked with moves away and one that is linked with a move to us. Um, let's start with the most obvious, and that is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. 29-year-old um, golden boot winner from last season, holds that record with Mohamed Salah and Sadio Mane, of course. Um, but two Chinese super clubs are interested in him. Um, they are reportedly offering up to £300,000 a week. And I did have a little chuckle when I read this, because it, only an Arsenal player could get linked with a move to China and be on less money than a current Arsenal player. Don't get it. He'd be on 50 grand a week less than Mesut Ozil's reportedly on. Um, we all remember about a year or so ago before he signed for us, he was actually on his way to China. He was going to a club out there um, called Tijan, I think, um, for about 71 million quid. That never went through in the end, and we ended up signing him for about 55, 60 million pounds. Um, now, this is where it gets interesting, because... He's reportedly on 190 grand a week at Arsenal, which ain't bad, is it? Let's be real. Um, for an extra 110 grand, which they're offering, that would boost it up to the 300 grand. But like I said, here's where it gets interesting. For every full season a Bamiyang does with Arsenal, he gets a bonus, apparently, of just shy of £4 million, which works out around 70 to 75 grand a week extra. Add that to the 190 it takes it up to about 260, 265. Is Aubameyang going to go to China for the sake of an extra 30 grand a week? I don't know. I'm not Aubameyang. I can't answer that. But the fact that he was linked with a move there um, a year or so ago and was going to go there um, before coming to us would suggest that he was open to that move. Now, Borussia Dortmund weren't stupid. They weren't ever going to turn down £71 million for him. Let's be real. Now, the talk is it's going to be in the region of about £60 million if we let him go. Now, Arsenal don't want to let him go. Um, they want to keep him. They're trying to fight too for now to keep him. And why wouldn't they? He's our Premier League top scorer. He's our top scorer. Um, so why wouldn't we keep him? Let's be real. You want players in the club that are going to score goals. You know, and Arsenal obviously want that, especially with the top goal scorer. But um, I think that if a, if a bigger bid comes in, it's going to be hard to to be Arsenal to sit there and go, hmm, you know, if that goes up to about 80, 85s, it's going to be very, very tempting for the club to take it. And do you know what? I don't think, I don't think we can reject it. If I'm being honest, 60 million, you can say, yeah, that's what we paid, keep him. We want 85, 90. That's when you're getting into stupid money. The guy's 29, he's 30 this month, I believe. Um, no, 90 million quid, 85 million quid. We're talking top, top money. You know, Ronaldo went to Juventus for that sort of money. So, I don't know. Let me, let me know what you guys think. Would you sell a Bamiyang? Um, do you think the story is true? And um, if so, do you think he will leave? Um, leave it all in the comments section down below. Second player we're going to get into is Lauren Koscielny. I spoke about him a couple of days ago on my transfer update. Um, but again, he has been touted um, all around Europe, apparently. <laughs> um, Arsenal are trying to offload him. Um, the latest club that have rejected the offer... Um, is Inter Milan, Antonio Conte's Inter Milan. We all remember him from Chelsea days. Um, he is the manager of Inter, and he's said to uh, not want him. Obviously, if you look at this, um, the centre-backs that they've got there, Godin is joining from Atletico Madrid. They've already got Skriniar. Um, they've also got uh, Miranda, Ranocchia. They have got some good, good centre-backs there. De Vries is another one. Um, so he don't fit into their plans. And... You know, why would, why would Lauren Koscielny want to go and play reserve football in Italy? You know, let's be real, he's not going to get a game. He ain't getting into that starting eleven, is he, over them centre-backs? So I don't know why he would want to go there. Obviously, Inter don't want him. But the other team that are linked with him is Ren. Um, now, we lost to them. Um, we all remember that uh, fallout when we lost to them in the Europa League um, knockout stages. They beat us 3-1. Um, but they are said to want him. And obviously, he did come from France originally. Um, it could be a way back home for him. Um, it could be a way of, you know, getting first team action. Because let's be honest, if we're being completely honest with ourselves, he shouldn't be anywhere near the first team next season. I know he played very, very well this season. Um, he played 29 games in total, and I thought he was fantastic for the large part of that. 
But going forward as a club, for me, he's done. Get rid. Thanks for the memories, mate. Thank you. Ta-ta. Um, and France could be the way out. It, it's across the water. Um, he's from France. He's going to get first team action. Ren could be the team that happens to sign him. But we shall see. I mean, the fee for this guy is going to be dirt cheap. Um, I suppose it depends what a club sees in him. Do they... Do they see him as um, a couple of years, two or three years worth of investment? Or do they just see him as a stopgap um, for one year until they go and get somebody else? I don't know. But I think the fee would be in the region of about five million quid. Nothing fantastic. Um, but we shall see. And um, the fact that these players have been linked with moves away in itself is showing some sort of progress. Because, you know, Arsenal players don't want to be linked with moves away. They want to stay at Arsenal because it's a comfortable football club. So... The fact these reports are coming out, it's music to my ears. Now, the last player we're going to speak about is a player that Arsenal have submitted a formal bid for, and this is Youssef N. Nezri. Um, he is a centre-forward who plays for Leganes in um, Spain, in La Liga. Um, he used to play for Malaga. He signed for Leganes in August 2018, so he's not even been there a year yet. This season, he has been fantastic. I watch La Liga, um, not as much as I used to, but I still watch it. And um, he has been fantastic. Um, I'll run through a couple of his traits in a minute. But the guy's as strong as an ox. He's six foot two. Um, he can score left foot. He can score right foot. He can score headers. He is the complete centre forwards because he, you don't know what he's going to do. He can run at you. He can dribble. Um, he can run off a shoulder. Um, he's lightning quick as well. Off the mark, five, ten yards. He is rapid. Um, the one thing I will say about this guy is that when I've watched him, sometimes he looks very clumsy. Um, but that's just a minor little smidgen because this guy is a very gifted footballer. He's a Moroccan international. He's 22 just. Um, a couple of days ago was his 22nd birthday. And the feed, um, the feed that's been reported and the bid that we've put in is around the £8.8 .8 million pound barrier. Um, so, listen, this could be the, uh, the Welbeck replacement. Obviously, Danny Welbeck's leaving the football club now. This could be the Welbeck replacement. I think he's a very, very gifted footballer, very exciting young talent. And we could do a lot worse than signing this guy. I'd be, I'd be over the moon if we got him. Um, I, think he'd, um, I think he'd light the Emirates up. Very, very technically gifted, like I say. He can play left wing, right wing, but predominantly he's a centre forward. Um, and like I said, he can run at people. He, very, he reminds me very much of Mares. Um, he's a Mares type player. Um, you never know what they're going to do. They're very unpredictable. They can go left, they can go right. He's got skill. Um, he can ping one in the top bins from 20 yards, but he can also trip over his own feet. <laughs> so, you know, I think he's a raw young talent and I think that we should definitely be going out and buying this guy. Um, this season, he scored 11 goals in 34 games in all competitions. A couple of assists in there as well. Um, but I, I think this would be a perfect signing. It's an Unai Emery signing as well. Um, it'd be something that, um, for me, when you play him on the left wing, he's better than a Wobi. He's got better end product than a Wobi. You could play him on the right wing, he's got better end product than anyone we put on the right wing. Um, he's not going to get a game up front. Let's be real, we've got Aubameyang and Lacazette. But we could bring him in as a winger, he can play as a winger, and he can score goals. And that is what our wingers need to start doing, um, or lack of wingers need to start doing, because we haven't really got a winger other than Reese Nelson. And he went out on loan to Hoffenheim last season. So I'd be over the moon for this guy. Um, leave it all in the comment section down below. Let me know whether you guys would be open to N. Nesri coming to Arsenal. Um, don't forget also, I will be doing my live stream about five o'clock this evening. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, so yeah, sorry it was late, but here it is. Um, thanks for watching. Stick a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe as well if you're new. And um, until my live stream, I'm out of here. Latest peeps.